So hallelujah, everyone who's listening to this broadcast, especially the Global Revival Church members, especially the young generation, young generation brothers and sisters, let God's grace be upon you. So right now, as the, the times are going forward, there's going to be more chaos, more confusion. There's going to be many times that we cannot discern. So in these times, what we really need without God's help it's going to be harder to live in this world without His help. So among the seven spirits of God, we're going to especially talk about the spirit of the fear of the Lord. We're going to focus on that. So hope you guys understand and believe in this word so that in your future, your life can be guaranteed and protected according to God's word in the midst of all tribulations that you live under the protection of God. I hope you guys can experience this. I bless you guys. Amen. So first of all, at the throne room, what is in the throne room? There's a few pictures in the Bible that we can see what is in the throne room. So Revelation the Apostle John when he was ex exiled he received God's revelation so he, he wrote the book of Revelation so Revelation chapter 1 verse 10 to 16 so Revelation chapter 1 verse 10 to 16 talking about the throne of God I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard behind me a loud voice as of a trumpet saying I am the Alpha and the Omega and the first and the last and what you see, write in a book and send it to the seven churches which are in Asia, to Ephesus, to Smyrna, to Pergamos, to Thyatira, to Sardis, to Philadelphia, and to Laodicea. Then I turned to see the voice that spoke with me, and having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands, and in the midst of the seven lampstands, one like the Son of Man, clothed with the garment down to the feet, and girded about the chest with a golden band. His head and hair were, were white, were white like wool as white as snow and his eyes like a flame of fire his feet were like fine brass as if refined in a furnace and his voice as the sound of many waters he had in his right hand seven stars, out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and in his countenance was like the sun shining in its strength. <clears throat> so right here it says, I was in the spirit. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. So when I was in the midst of the presence of his spirit, suddenly his eyes, spiritual eyes were opened and he was able to see the throne of God so when he saw the throne of God what was the first thing he saw he saw the seven golden lampstands that represents the seven spirits of God so in the midst of the seven golden lampstands the things that walking back and forth is the son of man so in the midst of the seven lampstands he saw one like the son of man walking back and forth and then he detail he de he talked in detail about what Jesus looked like. His head and hair were white like wool, as white as snow. And his eyes like a flame of fire, and his feet were like fine brass, as if refined in a furnace. And he was so really bright, and his voice as the sound of many waters. So everything that came out of his mouth was like a sharp two-edged sword so like a sword everything that came out of his mouth was like a two sh was a sharp two-edged sword that's what he saw so this was before the throne of god he didn't explain what he saw about the father god but the spirit the seven gold golden lampstands was represents the spirits of god, seven spirits of god and in chapter one of revelation talks about the son of man jesus christ but the important part is that in the spirit, when he was in the spirit, our eyes can be opened. When we are in the spirit, we can see these things. So we have to learn how to be in the spirit. So we're going to talk about that later. But in these kind of relationships, in the supernatural realm, as we're on this earth, 
we can see and hear everything directly in the kingdom of heaven. So, you know, Jesus said, I without seeing what the Father is doing, I cannot do anything. I can only do as the Father does. So, you know, the Father shows His Son everything. So, do you, do you believe that God loves you? Jesus said, just as Father, as you have loved me, I love you as well. So, then you have the right to see the kingdom of heaven too. So, in the Spirit, when you have a relationship with the Spirit, how are you going to live in the Spirit? That's what you're going to learn. So it's very different than living in this world. So when you learn this, Father God, how is He looking at this world? How is He ruling and reigning over this world? We can see. And just like the eyes like a flame of fire, we can see through. Do you want to have like the eyes like a flame of fire do you want to be able to see the key point the focus the motive in each person so that you won't be deceived do you want to have those eyes that can look see through everything so when you're in the spirit by glory and glory you can have these things so when you hear the words from his mouth his the words out of his mouth was like a sharp two-edged sword like the sword of the spirit so you can you know penetrate and let everything in everyone's heart be exposed so just with one one word you can either kill or you know help someone live so that kind of power has been given to you so when you're in the throne of God how do you have this relationship with him how do you give your heart to him or not when you learn how to do that then you can have this kind of power so the chapter 1 talks about the appearance of the son of man how it's uh, being manifested so let's go to Revelation chapter 4 from verse 1 to 11 so let's go from Revelation chapter 4 verse 1 to 11 after these things I looked and behold a door standing open in heaven and the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet trumpet speaking with me saying come up here and I will show you things which must take place after this. Immediately I was in the spirit and behold a throne set in heaven and one sat on the throne. And he who sat there was like a jasper and a sardius stone in appearance, and there was a rainbow around the throne in appearance like an emerald. Around the throne were twenty-four thrones, and on the thrones I saw twenty-four elders sitting, clothed in white robes, and they had crowns, they had crowns of gold on their heads. And from the throne proceeded lightnings, thunderings, and voices. Seven lamps of fire were burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Before the throne there was a sea of glass like crystal, and in the midst of the throne and around the throne were four living creatures, full of eyes in front, of, in front and in back. The first living creature was like a lion, the second living creature like a calf, the third, like, third living creature had a face like a man, and the fourth living creature was like a flying eagle. The four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes around and within, and they do not rest day or night saying holy 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 lord god almighty who was and is and is to come whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne who lives forever and ever the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by your will they exist and were created. So if you can see this picture, so try draw a picture about what is being said here, then you can easily understand about the throne of God. So chapter 4 is continuous from chap the last verse of chapter 3, but the last verse of chapter 3 talks about the, Lado the church of Laodicea, the lukewarm church who wasn't even cold or hot. So he said, I will knock on your door, and when I you hear my voice, if you open the door to your hearts and I will go in and I will dwell in with you. 
People who are like the Church of Laodicea, who are neither cold or hot, who are lukewarm, when they open their hearts, after this happens, when, the, when they open their hearts, so suddenly in chapter 4, they will be able to see the throne of God, the kingdom of heaven, being opened. So if you open your hearts on earth, then the, you'll be able to see that the doors are open in heaven. Uh, do you f you'll be able to feel that you are invited, that he's saying, come up higher, come here. So, you know, to a wedding ceremony, you need an invitation, right? So to go before the throne of God, have you been invited or not? If you open your heart, then you've been invited. If you didn't open your heart, then there's still a double door. So one door hasn't been opened yet, so you're not invited yet. But when you open your heart, then the doors will be opened. Then the, he the heaven's doors are open, ready for you, waiting for you. So then you're going to get the sign to come up higher to heaven. So just like in chapter 1, it says, Suddenly I was in the Spirit. And you're caught up in the Spirit. Suddenly you're in the Spirit. So in His presence and glory, when you have to learn how to dwell in His presence and glory. Then suddenly these kind of things will happen. So there, there was more details here than chapter 1. So what was here? There was a rainbow. There was seven lamps of fire. So there was an, then the word fire came up again. Seven lamps of fire represents the seven spirits of God. There's the four living creatures. And there's a lot of sound like lightning, thunders, and voices around the throne. So heaven isn't quiet. There's lightning, there's thunders, that you can hear voices. So there's many things that exist in the throne of God. So this is sh showing what's up there. So the seven spirits of God, the throne where God is sitting, and then on the right side, Jesus is sitting. So he's letting us see this kind of picture. So just as they see this, in this earth as well, in your heart, he wants to build up this kind of throne on earth as well. So especially today, among the seven spirits of God, without the seven spirits of God, you cannot access His world, His kingdom. So we're going to talk about the seven spirits more. So let's go to Isaiah chapter 11. From verse 1 to 3. There shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and of fear of the Lord. His delight is in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge by the sight of his eyes, nor decide by the hearing of his ears. So it's talking about the seven spirits of the Lord. So the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might. So counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. So these are the seven spirits of God. More interesting is, so when only when you are in the spirit of the fear of the Lord, so then his delight is in the fear of the Lord. So we have to look at this picture. So in the very center of the seven golden lampstands, the, se the centerpiece is the Spirit of the Lord. And all the branches have a set. So they have three branches. And they're all connected to one. So one Spirit is connected to all, but at the very center is the Spirit of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord is the very center of the lampstand. So it says, and then in Isaiah 61, it says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. It doesn't say, it doesn't really say that the Spirit of wisdom and understanding is upon me, but it says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. You know, it says that it appeared in authority or power, but then in Isaiah 61, it says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. So it's clearly um, said here. So among the seven spirits of God, so if we go to Isaiah 11, verse 3, it says, His delight is in the fear of the Lord. So who is He? It's Jesus Christ. So, so the Spirit of the Lord, which allows you to be with the Father and Jesus. So it says, Isaiah 61, verse 1 again, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. Okay? 
So he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. Those are all related to the Spirit of the Lord God. So it's upon Jesus Christ. And in the verse 3, it says, The Spirit of the fear of the Lord, when it comes upon you through the fear of the Lord, everything will be manifested through this Spirit of the fear of the Lord. So in the beginning of the book and at the end, it says the spirit of the Lord and then the spirit of the fear of the Lord. So we have the anointing because the spirit of the fear of the Lord is upon us. You've received the Holy Spirit, right? So that means the spirit of the fear of the Lord has came upon you already. So when you have the spirit of the fear of the Lord, Oh, so when the Spirit of the Lord is upon you, you have to ask for the Spirit of the fear of the Lord to be upon you. Just like how the Spirit of the Lord appears in the beginning, the Spirit of the fear of the Lord is at the end. So everything, every ministry, everything in your life, it will be fulfilled with the Spirit of the fear of the Lord. So the Spirit of the fear of the Lord, Spirit of the fear of the Lord is the fullness of His. So it's being full of His holiness. And everything being whole, complete, is that spirit of the fear of the Lord. So many people in their ministry ask for wisdom and understanding, or counsel and might. And people, when they do ministry, they ask for those kind of spirits. But there's rarely any cases where people ask for the spirit of the fear of the Lord. So this is a mistake. So starting from a long time ago, you know, God gave to Pastor Kim. He was interested in the spirit of the fear of the Lord. So for a long time, he's been asking for the spirit of the fear of the Lord. And when the spirit of the fear of the Lord comes upon you, it's the fullness, the fullness. So all of your the spirits that come before will come together and it will make your life complete, make it whole. So as soon as the spirit of the fear of the Lord comes upon you, before God, you cannot be arrogant or prideful. When the spirit of the fear of the Lord is upon you, you cannot endure without repenting. And when the spirit of the fear of the Lord is upon you, the powers of darkness have to leave. That's the kind of state you will enter when the spirit of the fear of the Lord comes upon you. So in the Bible it says, the spirit of the f it says the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. But then it also says, in the fear of the Lord, spirit of the fear of the Lord, then Jesus will be delighted. So do you understand? So the spirit of the fear of the Lord, you know, it, it, His wholeness appears. His whole, His wholeness appears before us. So let's go to Psalms 34, verse 7. It says, "When you fear the Lord, what kind of things will happen?" It's written here in Psalms 34, 7. So everything that you need will be um, filled up. So let's go to Psalms 34, 7. The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and delivers them. Okay. So fearing the Lord means, that means the spirit of the fear of the Lord is fulfilled in you. So that means whether people see what you're doing or not, you're going to be aware of God being there. So the spirit of the fear of the Lord means you're going to love what God loves, you're going to hate what God hates. So fearing the Lord means you hate sin and you are you your delight is in obeying in His word. So when you fear, have the fear of the Lord, what does it say here? The angel of the Lord. So when you have the fear of the Lord, the angel of the Lord will encamp all those who fear Him. The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear Him and delivers them. So in this generation right now, there's a many you know issues that are happening. But the angel of the Lord encamp. The encamp means. It's not just one messenger. If he wants to encamp you, then the an there must be at least 6,000 angels that come to encamp you. It's about one uh, Roman um, group, Roman soldier group. So when you fear him, automatically around you, the angel of the Lord that God sent will encamp you when you fear him. So in this generation, every hardship, there will be a guarantee of protection over you. So if you fear Him, then everything in the Bible, when you fear Him, He's going to bless you. And if you fear Him, you're going to love others. 
But in Psalms 91 it says, If you, those who love the Lord, the angel of the Lord will encamp you. So the Lord loves you, and you, those who say that the Lord is my refuge, He will encamp you. So when you ask for the spirit of the fear of the Lord, so when you give all into Him, your heart all into Him, then in the basic, everything will be guaranteed for you. He will protect you. So that's verse 7. Let's go to verse 8. O taste and see that the Lord is good, blessed is the man who trusts in him. O fear the Lord, you his saints, there is no want to those who fear him. Is there a want to those who fear them? For, fear him? So the protection and the overflow and abundant and supernatural supply system, once that opens up to you, are you going to be worried about your future? Your life? It's just one key, if you fear the Lord, so if you, if you want to fear the Lord, you can just ask for help and the spirit of the fear of the Lord will come to you. So when you start to get filled up with the spirit of the fear of the Lord, then your life's focus will become very simple. You only think about Him. Then naturally, then His presence and glory will encamp you. And when His presence and glory encamps you, those spiritual beings, angels that carry it will also come with them. So like the 24 elders, it's the basic. They will encamp you when you fear Him, and then the presence and glory will follow. Then you can taste the goodness of God. And you can eat, taste and eat the goodness of God, and you will know the goodness. So that means God's power and love, you'll be able to experience it in your life. So, if you cannot experience the power and love of God in your life and you just keep reading the Bible, then your life will become boring. You'll just be sleepy. Because it's no fun if you don't experience what you're reading. You're not curious. There's no life. So, you just don't like anything. You lose hope. You get depressed. You lose your direction. Everything becomes empty. So, what can bring you back to life? It's to ask for the spirit of the fear of the Lord. So let the spirit of the Lord, fear of the Lord, fulfill me, fill me up. Then the angel of the Lord will encamp you, and you'll be able to experience it in your life. And everything you need, you will lack nothing. He will fill up everything. So this is what we really need in this time, especially to the young generation. You're always worried about what am I going to do in the future? Don't worry about it. So if you just fear the Lord, then your life will be guaranteed and protected. Do you understand? So let's move on. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. So it says said the good thing, and that you will lack nothing. Well, it says detailed more here. Those who fear Him, you will seek the Lord. How often do you seek Him? Besides when you pray, when you eat, do you seek Him? Or do you keep seeking Him? Or do you only seek Him temporarily when you do meditation? Or you, you know, when you forcefully do meditation, that's not fearing the Lord. You have, if you want to fear the Lord, you have to like Him. If you fear the Lord, that means you have to honor Him. If you fear the Lord, that means you have to love Him. If you fear the Lord, that means you have to miss Him. And fearing the Lord means you have to want to see Him all the time. That is the fear of the Lord. So His presence and glory, when it covers you, when it's upon you, then you will lack, you will not lack any good thing. What is the good thing you want? Even if it's your cell phone, even if it's your lap, if it's a laptop that you want, when God sees that I, you need it right now, then He will provide it for you in a supernatural way. Just like how I, I experienced with the laptop. If you fear the Lord, beyond your imagination, in God's supernatural way, He will provide for you. His supernatural provision will come upon you. So fearing the Lord was, in another word, you know, He is the good shepherd, so I shall not want. He is my shepherd, I shall not want. So if you treat, if you think of Him as your shepherd, you rely on Him, you seek Him, you follow Him, and then whether you understand what He's doing or not, you trust in Him, and you have to be by Him. That is fearing the Lord. Then He will protect you, and He will provide for you, and you will be able to encounter Him. 
It's not just something that you cannot even imagine. It will happen real in your life. So what does it mean to fear the Lord? What do you do to fear the Lord? What is considered fearing the Lord? In verse 11, Come you children, so little children, so it's saying, Come you children, you little children, it's very interesting. It doesn't say those who are wise or mature. It doesn't say that. It doesn't say those who are wise and mature. It says, Come you children. So those who are lacking or saying, I don't know how to do this yet, I'm still young, I still have a lot to learn, those who acknowledge that, they will be invited. So is there anything that you remember about this? In Matthew 11, what does it say? It says, before it says, um, come to me all who labor and are heavy laden. Let's go to Matthew 11, 25, verse, uh, verse 25 to 30. At that time, Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. So, you know, they have hidden these things from the wise and understanding, but revealed them to little children, those who are pure and just come before him. So if you look at the kingdom of God, what people are surprised about, so your usual why, how wise you are, how educated you are as they compare it in church, you say, how can that kind of person do anything? Suddenly the spirit comes upon them and they get gifts, they become wise, they become smarter. The reason is only one thing. It's the kingdom principle. In the kingdom of heaven, those who try to lift themselves up, it doesn't. nothing is revealed or open to them. It's only revealed to those who fear him. And if you fear him, then you're going to be humble if you fear him. Because you, when you know who God is, you can only be you become the person that God wants you to be and when you know who God is you would repent for your life so you would only you would become humble if you fear him so only to those who are humble the wisdom and revelation will be given to them so let's move on so verse 26 Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal Him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So there's a key word here. The Father has to want it for the revelation to be over. The Son, that Jesus Christ, has to want it to, for it to be revealed to you. Only to you know, only to those that the Son requests of the Father to release revelation will be re the revelation will be released. So what does the Father want? He's going to look for those who fear Him, who fear the Father. So when you have the spirit of the fear of the Lord, you will have to fear Him. To those kind of people, these things will be revealed. The revelations will come. It it will not be open to those who do not seek Him. It doesn't open to those who serve a lot. It's those who give your heart before Him and that you rely on Him, you give your whole life to Him, you seek Him, and humbly you obey His Spirit, His Word, then to them it will be open to you. So how, do, how does this wisdom and revelation be open to you? You have to come, to, it says, come to me, come to Him. So not being far away accessing from the internet, you have to come to Him. He's saying to come face to face with Him. He's not going to teach you from far away. If he teaches you from far away, just like Aaron and Miriam, they're going to try to go against, you know, like Moses, the leader. What does God say? You guys saw through dreams and visions, but my servant Moses is different from you. My servant Moses, I never hid anything. I never said it in dark sayings. To Moses, I talked to him face to face and I showed myself to him. That means Moses came to him. You understand? So what kind of people would come to him? Based on the level of how you fear the Lord, 
that determines how much closer you go to God or not. So God's principle is the same. By His Jesus' blood, He brought you before Him. He allowed you to come before Him, to come closer to Him. So then after that, by faith, you have to grab hold of it. And then with the fear, your heart to fear the Lord, when you seek Him, then all this revelation in a supernatural way will be allowed, will be open to you. So let's go back to Psalms 34. Come you children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Who is the man who desires life and loves many days that he may see good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry out and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. Do you understand? What did he teach you about fearing the Lord? It's to come to Him. Come to Him and when you listen to Him and learn His word. So the sample here, those who, fear the Lord, those who fear the Lord would leave evil. Those who fear the Lord, their words would be different. Those who fear the Lord, they will be considered righteous, but the righteous will be blessed. They will be guaranteed. They will be protected. He will hear those, the righteous and the righteous, he will protect them and he will guarantee them according to his projects. The righteous will not lack anything. So the key is what? If you fear him, the righteous are guaranteed. The protection is guaranteed. Provision is guaranteed. Wisdom and revelation is guaranteed. So everything you need to live in this world will be guaranteed to you. So his word, his covenant has guaranteed everything. So believe in this. So when you pray, do you think he listens to you? Or does it, or does it seem like he's not answering you? The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his and his ears are open to their cry and he will deliver them out of the tribulations. So the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. So he's going to intervene in all your hardships and situations you are in. So if you read Psalms 18, what kind of feeling did you have? When David said, I had this kind of hardship, I had this kind of emptiness. I was in the wilderness. I was, I was had a hard time. He was crying out to the Lord. Suddenly, God from heaven, he shook the earth and he came on the clouds and with his voice, he sent the fire. So many things happen, right? When David cried out. So those who fear him, God will come down and intervene in any situation you're in. As long as, even if the angel of the Lord encamps you, wouldn't the earth around you shake? And even if the word of God is proclaimed, then all the enemies that are coming against you will be broken, will break, will be destroyed. Wouldn't they run away in fear? So all the schemes of devil will be destroyed in one day. With his revelation and wisdom and power, wouldn't it cover you if you fear him? So when you fear him, these things will happen in your life. So why in the church did they kill Ananias and Sapphira? Is anger one of the fruits of the Spirit? No. The fear of the Lord was there, but they lied to Him, lied to God, they deceived the Spirit. To, in order to build up the church, they interfered, they were blocking, they were disturbing the fear of the Lord. They even gave them three hours of the time. But when they did that, you know, everyone heard about what happened to Ananias and Sapphira. So in the whole Judea, they were, a great fear came upon all of them. Those who feared him came closer, and those who didn't believe were afraid, so they didn't come closer. So then after that, in Peter, in the apostles, the many signs and wonders were among them. So even if the shadow was upon the person, the, all the diseases left. The spirit of the fear of the Lord covered that area. So all the diseases left. And more greater freedom, revelation, and supernatural power was upon them. Do you understand?
So in the end times, God wants to restore the church. How do you, what kind of spirit will he pour out to restore the church? He believes that it's the spirit of the fear of the Lord that will be poured upon. If the spirit of the fear of the Lord is poured upon the church, then the church will be uh, cleaned up and there will be a reset in the church. Just like how Jesus did the temple cleansing. Just like how Moses threw the Ten Commandments and that he overturned everything. So, so when the spirit of the fear of the Lord comes, it will clean up this earth. Because to all the multitudes, all the people, in order for them to fear the Lord, and when they fear the Lord, just like Jesus did the temple cleansing, all the diseases will leave, and the praises of children will be, you know, will go up higher. So just like that, in this time, we're going to change the belief system, thinking patterns of all believers. So when you fear Him, then His, beyond our imagination, His glory, His heavenly army will encamp us. His glory and presence, when it's over, it covers us, then no one can hurt us, no one can attack us. And when His power and authority, he, he will supernaturally provide for us beyond their imagination. So His supernatural things will happen in us. So the fear of the Lord, the spirit of the fear of the Lord, what is it? It's the fulliness. It's the fullness of His glory. It includes everything, the holiness. So knowing the spirit of the fear of the Lord, when it covers the whole earth, so when He pours out the spirit to us in you and me, you know, fearing Him and His promises and words, it'll be established, it'll manifest in our lives. I bless you guys. It's very simple. So, you know, repent for not seeking Him and keep asking for the spirit of the fear of the Lord. So there's the seven spirits of God, but especially the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Please pour it out to me so that my heart is neither cold or confused and it's not afraid and I'm not having a hard time. Let me be filled up with His love. Just like, in, just like you promised in Psalms 34, let it happen, let it manifest in my life. So when you pray to Him like that, God is waiting for you to cry out to Him like that. Just like those who are like little children, they seek His word. And when they ask and they seek His word, then He's waiting to pour it out for us. So the supernatural power, especially to Gen Z, to the young generation, let this kind of power be poured out to you even greater. So from generation to generation, to restore all of it, so all those saints' prayers, when it's all focused like that, Hawaii will change, the U.S. will change, the whole world will become different. So when those who believe rise up, then there will be no more lies or darkness or sexual immorality. There won't be those who deceive people, you know, try to control with money. So everything that tries to destroy the kingdom of God will be gone, will be destroyed, will be broken down. And the new spirit of God, just like the living water, will overflow out of us like the river of fire, like the river of oil. All of those rivers will overflow out of us and the whole world will, will bring the whole world before God. So we'll be a tool of His kingdom. So I bless you guys. In Jesus' name, Amen.